family, friends, neighbors. Welcome to virtual worship with the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church, Lot Kiri. Thank you for worshiping with us on this the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. I am the Reverend Brenda Curtin Harewood, Superintendent Pastor and President of the GMBC. And I will be serving as the liturgist and preacher for today's service. Our sacred artists are members of the GMBC Dance Ministry. We extend a warm welcome to the praise dancers from the M.L. Wilson Baptist Church and from the Mount Zion Baptist Church. We trust that God would use their ministry to bless us in a very special way. I also extend a very warm thanks and appreciation to our technical support team. Sister Shanice Garway and Brother Shaka Neal Burnett. I extend a very special welcome to persons who are visiting us in virtual church today. Welcome. Please stay with us for the entire service. God has a word of hope and encouragement for you. Please help us to connect with you by sharing your contact information and your prayer requests in our inbox if you are watching this service on Facebook. If you are watching us on YouTube, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to reach out to us by email. Our email address is info at gmbc hyphen lotcary.org or feel free to give us a call. Our telephone number is 592-227-7455. Members from our evangelism and prayer ministry are always standing by to connect with you, to pray with you, and to encourage you. We would love to hear from you. Please join me in extending belated birthday greetings to Minister Olson Abrams, who is currently serving as our Associate Minister at the M.L. Wilson Baptist Church. We pray that God would bless him as he celebrates yet another milestone. We would like to extend our special thanks to all of you for your faithful stewardship. Thank you for your consistent stewardship through the giving of your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's our prayer that God would continue to bless you and to multiply to you a hundredfold. We want to urge you, wherever you are, to follow the guidelines of your ministry or Department of Public Health related to COVID-19. And please continue in prayer that God would bring healing to our global community. And when available in your community, please get vaccinated. We believe that vaccination will help to save your life. And now I invite you to prepare your hearts and mine as we worship the Lord together. Trust in God and do good. Delight in God and live faithfully in loving community. Commit your ways unto God 
and trust in God with all your heart. Be still before God and set aside revenge and wait patiently on God's salvation. Trust in God to illuminate the path of justice so that you might follow it in faith. God is our refuge in the time of trouble, our helper, our rescuer, our savior, and in him we place our trust. Let us worship and bow down before our God, for God is worthy of our adoration. Let us pray. Faithful God, help us to trust in you and to do good that we might dwell in the safety of your presence. Help us to find our delight in you, knowing that we will receive the true desire of our hearts. Help us by your grace to commit our ways and to trust in you, to watch and to move in our lives. We know that you have the power to make things right and that your justice can cause us to shine like the noonday sun. Help us to be still and to wait patiently on you. As we ask these things with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now enjoy a dance of worship led by the Emma Wilson Baptist Praise Dancer. Let us worship God together. Yesterday we had choir rehearsal, but now we can sing it for real. Come on, help us sing this song. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Been practicing. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Thank you, Jesus. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can.
just shout Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is God thanks for the praise dances from ML Wilson Baptist Church and we pray that God would continue to bless them and to empower them for greater Christian service I'd like to invite you to read together with me as we consider our text for today found in the book of Genesis chapter 45 and I'll be reading from verses 3 through 15. Genesis 45, 3 through 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brother was not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said to them, I am your brother Joseph the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for selling me here because it was to save the lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for, next, for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you as a remnant on earth, to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of this of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You will live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, 
you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourself and so can my brother Benjamin that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brother talked with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks to God. The Mount Zion praise dances will continue to lead us in worship through dance. Let us continue to give God all our praise and adoration. Oh na 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 Oh na 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 Oh na 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 Oh na 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 When my back's against the wall He will answer when I call I put my confidence in you All my confidence in you When I don't know what to do And I just ain't got a clue I put my confidence in you All my confidence in you between the rock and the hard place My heart here come to you just a wash face I miss the vibes by the mercy and our peace Cry out to God, no make my knees with the last place Me lift the hand, me turn me to Jehovah Him on my rock, him on my shield and me cover Take me to my destiny upon him shoulder My cup on it over When my back's against the wall He will answer when I call Put my confidence in you All my confidence in you in you, all my confidence in you, fear to the substance of things when I hope for, the evidence of the things when I see, Jesus Christ you know I believe you, when you tell me you'd rescue me, right now my confidence up, my faith it up, and you may believe and trust, feel like a new artist get a bus, feel like me move from the last to the first, feel like me minus turn to a plus, underestimate me, you better go adjust. Sometimes me question God, believe me oh, When the pressure get tight and squeeze me Him not forsake, him never did leave me Yo, see the Bible go reading now Just trust and believe in now It's just your fear God need now Like a mustard seed enough Oh na 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 Oh na na and praise for the Mount Zion praise team. And now I invite you to continue to worship with me as we meditate on God's word as uh, found in the book of Genesis chapter 45 verses 3 to 15. I pray that God's grace peace and mercy will be multiplied to each 
and every one of you. And that God, by the Holy Spirit, would illumine the word. Lord, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. Take your word, break your word, make it the living word, manna to our hungry souls. Christian friends, as we look at the text that was read to you from Genesis 45 verses 3 to 15, we come face to face with Joseph and his brothers. To fully grasp Joseph's story, um, where we are in this text, it is important for us to reread or to read for the first time the, the entire Joseph story, which can be found in Genesis 37 and Genesis 39 through 50. In our text, Joseph discloses his identity to his brothers, the very brothers who tried to kill him at a younger age, but settled instead for selling him into slavery. Now these brothers find themselves before Joseph, not as a slave, but as Pharaoh's prime minister, the person with authority. And the brothers can therefore assume that Joseph will get his revenge. But instead, Joseph chooses to look back at the situation and to celebrate God's sovereignty and God's protection on his life. Saying that God had sent him before to preserve a remnant and earth and keep alive survivors. God had made him the father of Pharaoh and Lord of all of Pharaoh's house and ruler over the land of Egypt. In the story of Joseph, reconciliation is front and center throughout the drama. Joseph has chosen to focus on God's protection, redemption, and love in this situation and thus is able to find a way to love and to forgive his brothers for their prior evil actions. God calls on each and every one of us to respond in the same way to those who harm us and hurt us. God calls us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Our scripture readings today remind us 
that God calls us to love our enemies and to seek forgiveness ultimately. Such forgiveness is for our own good. For our souls were not created to harbor bitterness and wrath. Our world is greatly in need of reconciliation. What lessons can we learn from Joseph's story? First, from Joseph we learn that reconciliation is possible even in the worst of circumstances. Although Joseph's brothers wronged him, Joseph sought reconciliation with them. No matter what happened in the past, Joseph knew that ultimately relationship is primary. And so he chooses not to let the past stand in the way of reconciliation. Reconciliation is possible, my brother and sister. Regardless of the family turmoil, that you have experienced in the past. Regardless of the history of our nation, based on racist division, regardless of the hurt caused by perpetrators in our lives, reconciliation is possible but we must choose reconciliation. Reconciliation is a choice. God chose to reconcile us back to God, even though we wandered away from God through sin. And so like God, we have a choice. We can choose reconciliation. But for true reconciliation to occur, we must remember that reconciliation requires facing and telling the truth no matter how difficult or painful it might be. We cannot glim over or ignore what has happened. Joseph reference to his brothers <coughs> the wrong they had done to him. He calls on them to acknowledge that they had wronged him. And once this acknowledgement occurs, he chooses not to remain or to dwell there forever. He said to his brothers, come closer and see, I am Joseph, who you sold into Egypt. In our world, we want reconciliation without facing and dealing with the truth. Reconciliation requires confession 
admission, forgiveness. The truth about the past, how it impacts the present and the future. Unless we recognize this, there can be no healing, no moving forward. The wounds of the past has effects on the present and the future. We must openly, honestly, and truthfully address past hurts. Jesus puts it best when he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Let us not remain stuck in the past. Let us acknowledge the truth and let Jesus set us free. Third, Joseph recognized that for reconciliation to take place, we must recognize God's hand in our situation. God was not a character or a perpetrator in Joseph's story. The evil that was done to Joseph was done to him by his brothers. And then while he was in Egypt, the evil he experienced were done by the various perpetrators in his life. <coughs> but Joseph recognized that even in the midst of evil, God did not depart from him. God did not abandon him. But God was with him. Saving him. Encouraging him. Strengthening him. Giving him the fortitude to bear. And to forbear. We have to be careful when we read this text that we do not ascribe to a theology that God is responsible, that God willed it. For such a theology is often perpetuated when people try to justify slavery and other evils in the world. God did not will that evil. Such evil were done by the evildoers, but God was present with the victims and supported them and strengthened them through the struggles. So when we think of slavery and how Africans were enslaved and brutalized, we can never say, that it was God's will. But we can say with assurance that God did not abandon the enslaved. And so Joseph says to his brothers, do not be afraid. God took this evil and turned it around for good. We, as we seek reconciliation, have to be able to let go of the pain, knowing that even in the pain, God was with us, saving us, and transforming us. Fourthly, as we consider the story of Joseph, we must understand that 
reconciliation requires us to make things right. Joseph is in a position of authority. And often when we come face to face with persons who wrong us and we have authority, the first instinct is to take revenge and to make them pay. But instead, Joseph extends hospitality and generosity. I think he remembers that when he was down, God did not abandon him. In his darkest hour, God was with him and constantly made a way of escape. And so when Joseph faces his brothers who did evil to him, rather than to take revenge, he offers hospitality and generosity and invites them to go and bring their father, their children, and their grandchildren so that he can help provide for them in the land of Egypt. God invites us to reconcile with those who has hurt us by extending to them forgiveness, by extending to them the opportunity of reconciliation, by remembering not the evil they have done, but God's presence and God's sustaining grace during this time of evil. May God grant us the grace, the power, the humility to be reconciled back to those who has hurt us. May God's spirit of reconciliation be at work in your life, in your family, in your church community, in your nation, that God might reconcile his people back to the place of grace and forgiveness. May God bless us. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for being our source of every blessing. Thank you for sending for Joseph into Egypt to save the world from famine and for reconciling his brothers and father and the rest of his family. Thank you for sending Jesus into our lives to save us from selfishness and greed for teaching us to treat others as we would have them treat us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your compassion and for your mercy. Bless our offering of worship today. Fill us with your spirit and send us forth to those in need whether they be friend or foe, so that we might serve them as brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go with the blessing of God. As followers of Jesus, to love your enemies and to do good to those who hate you. Go with God's blessing 
as followers of Jesus. To bless those who curse you. And to pray for those who persecute you. Go with the blessings of God. As followers of Jesus. To do unto others. As you would have them do unto you. Go with the blessings of God in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.